Hey guys, welcome to another episode of My Something Random. Today we are out in the woodworking shop and uh, I've got a cool video for you word workers out there, specifically all the people that own a saw stop table saw. Um, I've come up with a little hack uh, that is for the folding out feed table that saw stop sells. So if you're interested and like to see what I come up with, stick around, I'll show you what I've got. All right, so this is the saw stop out feed table. And if any of you own it, this is the configuration that you used to see it in. Um, it's a bunch of one inch thick uh, powder coated poles um, lined up next to each other with three of the poles having these actually quite nice uh, rollers at the end. And it got to me thinking, it's nice and all, but I wanted something that looked like maybe why I paid almost $400 for it. It was like 380 probably with tax. Um, and I was wondering why did not Saw Stop make this a solid table? I mean, I've got this great little insert here. Why couldn't they just built more uh, little aluminum inserts for the whole thing um, and dropped it in these slots? And then it got me thinking, why can't I make my own? Um, so these are one inch thick. So what I ended up doing is went ahead and took these two rail sections off and now I have one, two, three, four sections that I would make drop-in inserts for. So what I came up with, um, and this is just a test piece, but this is a one inch piece of board. I routed two grooves on either side and what it does is these grooves will fit in right between the screws that are already built on the table. These will fit really nice and tight and snug on. It's really tight and snug. Slides right in and it's made to look like it was built on the table. So nice and flat. So next I was thinking, okay, what type of material would I want to use? You can use wood and that's going to be your most budget friendly option. Um, the option that I went with um, is the most aesthetically pleasing. It's not the most budget friendly in, you know, option out there, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, I almost spent another $200 on what I'm going to show you now. But I really like the way it turned out and it looks like it was from factory. It matches the black on this table. So let me show you what I've done. Okay, so this is what I ended up buying. This stuff is called HDPE, which is high density polyethylene. Um, basically, it's a fancy word for a special type of plastic. Um, I have a plastic um, oh, manufacturer retailer here in Oklahoma where I ha live. Um, I'm sure most states will have some sort of place that you can buy plexiglass and plastics. Um, because these rails are one inch thick, um, I was able to source this stuff in one inch thickness. Um, being that it's one inch does make this more expensive um, and it kind of limits you on what your options were. Now, if this was in three quarter or something else, then you would be able to find a variety of different materials that's a little bit more readily available, even just phenolic tabletop surface stuff. Um, but this is one inch black HDPE that I have routered a groove in. So looking at our table really quick, this first space here um, is gonna be exactly 10 and 15 sixteenths. And don't wanna cut it over that, you don't wanna cut it to 16, you don't wanna cut it a little under. Um, and the reason I cut it to exactly 10 and 15 sixteenths is when I slide this in, it's gonna be quite tight. The thing that makes it even tighter is because some of these you have to put washers on when you assemble the table. These washers are just a little bit proud of the pull, and so sliding it past these washers actually kind of makes it fit even tighter and locks it in. Now you could remove these washers. Um, it may not make it quite as tight, and um, you know you may have a little bit of slop. I wanted this fit tight, so when I folded it up and down, um, these things don't move at all. There's no risk for them to slide at all. So cutting it at 10 and 15 16 once you slide this in, don't plan on removing it very easily because it does fit very tight and snug, but that's what you want. There's a number of ways you can cut this groove. 
Um, I just did this on my router table. This stuff cuts like butter. And just did a router bit that works like this. I had to set up a little bit of an auxiliary fence because my router uh, fence did not slide forward, uh, forward uh, enough. So I would do a test piece just to see um, the depth that you need to match the screw head and the width. Once you get that set, it's easily to do to reproduce. So let me set this back on the tripod and show you what this looks like um, sliding this in and how tight it does fit and what it looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and slide these in. So one thing you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to when making these is your bolts that are on these rails are not centered on the rails. They're actually slightly located up. So I would go ahead and take an, a calipers and measure from the top to bottom because this is actually gonna sit just a little bit down so when you slide it in, it sits flush with the rails um, and it doesn't sit proud of the rails. And like I said, it's gonna fit quite tight when you slide this in here. So don't plan on removing this a whole bunch of times and do a bunch of test fits because once you slide it in, it's gonna stay put. And let's go just a little bit over here. Okay, perfect. So, sitting perfectly flush with the table. Let's get the next one. Just making sure I get these slid in because I really don't want to have to take them out again either. So, you'll have some hardware left over when you take these rails out. So go ahead and bolt all of the bolts that you have extra for the hardware into the sides so it's supported on both sides all along. And you'll notice that you actually have some holes that are not filled on these. Um, you're gonna wanna head and go out and get some extra bolts and screws. Now you can order them from SawStop or just go to your local hardware store. Uh, they're gonna be a metric bolt. Uh, I believe they're an M6 um, inch and a quarter long bolts. Yeah, inch and a quarter. And then you'll you know have your thing supported all along. If you don't want to do that, I really doubt being this is an inch thick that you'll have any problem with you know it ever wanting to bow or sag or anything because this is a stable material. Um, but if you're doing wood or something like that, you may want that little bit of extra support just to lock it in there so it's gonna stay dead flat for you. Okay, got these two pieces slid in. Next is gonna be the side wings here. Now, if you just like it with these here, you can leave it with that. I choose to go out and buy two more. These are going to be five and a half inches wide, and they are going to be 30, I think 30 and a quarter long. These were 10 and 15 sixteenths wide by 32 inches long. So they come all the way to the end. These aren't as long because you do have the rollers at the end. So I left some space at the end. So you can incorporate the rollers when you go ahead and slide these on. These side ones are gonna be a little bit more difficult to do because when your legs swing up, you're gonna to have to cut a groove on the bottom side for your legs to have room to swing up into this. You can cut it all the way through or you can router a recess on the bottom so it still looks flat. 
Um, that recess on the bottom is going to be pretty thin on that little area, so you may find it easier just to router that spot out or cut it out with a bandsaw, just a little notch where that leg's going to swing up into it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this particular piece routered. Um, we'll do both sides, and then we'll start to lower the uh, lower the bit. And we'll use that test piece that we made before as kind of our template so we know how high and how low to uh, get the router bit. And then, of course, we'll obviously we'll do a little test fit just to make sure it fits snug. Um, so yeah, let's get going. side pieces is cut a notch. So the notch that I have cut is, we'll do this in inches too, is about 1.19. I mean if it's a little over you can be fine. So there's two inches. So two inches will work fine. And then your gap here is gonna be about one inch, just a hair over one inch because those poles are one inch. So if you leave yourself a little bit more wiggle room, you have more room to center this um, and um, get it more exact. The last thing you'll wanna do is you have to cut a little bit of notch on the back and so you'll see right here the table supports, they stick out proud of these posts when the table is folded down. So you'll need to uh, cut a little space here. And so I just used a straight bit on my router. Um, I've cut it right about two inches wide. And we're looking about One point two inch, one point two three inches tall, and depth wise, we're not talking much here at all. Let's see here real quick. Well, if I can measure this here, sorry. I would go in and say do it about 0.18 inches deep and kind of go from there and test fit it. So let's go ahead and fold this table up. That's with the one wing in. So you won't be able to completely fold this up and slide it in at the same time on the other side. You'll have to tip it down and slide it in. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and test fit this. Make sure this fits. So we'll tip that forward a little bit. Once again, this is going to fit tight, but that's what you want. Because you don't want this flopping around.
All right. see something like this and hopefully incorporate it in the future. Was it necessary? Maybe not, but I really like the look of it because most people that build an outfeed table for themselves usually have a solid surface. Now, one little pro tip for this particular type of material is if you can get it in an orange peel, I would encourage you to do that just because it's going to show scratches a lot less. My particular plastic manufacturer did not have it in stock. They would have had to order it and I would have had to order a four by eight foot sheet. Now, if they've got it in stock, you're luckier than I was. Had to order it in the glossy and it did come with scratches in it. It's not like when you go and apply plexiglass and it has that protective film on it. It just comes the way it is from the manufacturer. <clears throat> um, you can make it out of a thinner material. It's gonna be a little bit more work because you're gonna have to offset those screws a little bit more. You don't have to make it out of this plastic like I said in the beginning of the video, but I would encourage you to make it out of a stable material that is not gonna be affected by the elements. If you make it out of something like pine, you may not be happy with it in you know a month's time if you got humid weather or set something wet on it or got some wet lumber. Um, just, just make it out of something stable. If you wanna see more content like this, be sure and hit the subscribe button below, just like everything on my channel, something different, something random, every video that I make. And I will try to throw the description of all this down in the comments uh, section. So if somebody were wanting to build this, um, they can hopefully go by my plans that I've made. Um, if I leave something out, be sure and send me a message. And thanks for watching. <laughs>